I'm your host, Jeff Sart. We're going to take you behind the scenes with the craft distillers who are pouring their heart and soul into crafting the next version of America's Spirit. This is the Great American Whiskey Cookers. Let's say you are a distillery and you have a building where part of it used to be used for a church. What would you use that part of the building for? Well, if you are the Blom Brothers, you use it for barrel storage, and you call that area the Church of Latter-day Faints. These two guys are having way too much fun. Welcome to this edition of the Great American Whiskey Cookers. If you haven't already, like us on Facebook, the socials, Instagram, and we also have a Patreon page. Today we're here at Blom Brothers in Galena, Illinois, and I have Mike and Matt Blom. One of these times I'm gonna I'm gonna switch. We're gonna mess it up you know, at some point. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, but and we're standing here on site where your still house is, where your tasting room is, in the barrel area, right? Yeah, this is uh, this was originally full of barrels. I mean, over the first several years we were open, we got this room full of about 700, 750 barrels, which was a lot. Stacked to the was, ceiling. Yeah, yeah. stacked. Yeah. We just kind of had a narrow walkway in between. But uh, um, yeah, this room uh, used to be the Mormon Church of Galena, <laughs> uh, which yeah, now we call the Church, Church of Latter-day Latter Faints. <laughs> But um, yeah, we eventually started out grow this room, wanted to keep making whiskey and laying it down. So we ended up buying a uh, barn about four miles down the road. It was an old, uh, an old horse stable building. So it had a horse arena and a bunch of stables in it. We tore a lot of them out and put concrete down and turned it into a rick house. Okay. So this is just kind of the swing space for newly filled barrels or barrels that have come from over there. And then, uh, we moved our bottling line into here. Actually, we didn't have a proper bottling line when we first started uh, for the first, what, how many years? Six, six years, seven years? We got years. this in year eight, I think. Yeah, year eight, I think. Yeah. We were doing everything assembly line with our hands, our bartenders, tour guys. this thing only really puts on the uh, the foils and labels. I mean, so yeah. we're still- We're still, we're still doing a lot hands of hands-on. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, and also, you know, this uh, provided us with some extra space to start palletizing finished product, which we weren't able to do before because we just didn't have the room. So let's talk about your barrels a little bit. And to, where do you get them? Uh, they look like they're, uh, what, 53 gallons? Yep, that right? 53. Um, so where do you get them? We get them from Independent Stave Company. Okay. Uh, they have locations in Missouri, Kentucky, and actually they just bought the Brown Foreman Cooperage called the Jack Daniel. Yeah, yeah they yeah, just Co um, Cooperage. We we were lucky to be with them since day one. I mean, they 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 make barrels for a lot of the big places too. Um, the nice thing is with them, uh, just great relationship with the folks we work with, and also the barrels are fantastic. And sure. we have options that uh, uh, you know we can get eighteen month air dried oak and twenty four month air dried oak and things that you just can't get with a you know, commodity cooperage. Right. And they make great hats. Yeah. I just realized good, I was wearing that. It's a good thing. Thanks, ISC. <laughs> How many barrels at a time are you buying from ISC? Uh, like mm -hmm. 65, 70 at a time. And it lasts Once you about a quarter. How long? About, about a quarter. quarter. Yeah. yeah. Barrel entry proof. So your whiskey goes into your barrels. And what, what's your proof that it goes 110. into? 110. Mm -hmm. Now we've, we've changed that over time. Um, it's 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 funny. It's kind of cat and mouse. So when we were aging barrels for their entire life in this room, even though we cut off all the HVAC and wanted to make this kind of like you know get cold and hot, never really happened. So to put it into perspective, at that time we were going in at 117 proof. Okay. After five six years, I mean we're we just started doing some uh, cask strength barrel proof releases uh, that have been coming in at like 144. That's how much after just five or six years in this room, the proof shoots up. Wow. So then we switched to 110. I was like, okay, let's start a little lower. It's not as cost effective, but it also, you know, you're targeting a lot of the, the wood sugars. It's gonna change the spirit a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we've had stuff aging in the new warehouse, which is not climate controlled, it's only going up like three proof after that amount of time. So it is, I mean, it is going to change the product over time, right. you know, hopefully for the better, it'll, sure. it'll be different. Um, 
but it was just, you know, having everything come out at 140 plus was kind of, it's good for some things, but right. it also can create some challenges. It certainly but, can. Yeah. What's your uh, char level? Mostly three. Um, we majority. Yeah, we we we've done a, a lot of different things. So we actually started playing out with different profile toasts mm -hmm. prior to a char. That was uh, something I asked. I asked. They do that for their wine barrels. So okay. we did that for a while. Um, something they had been ISC had been experimenting with that we uh, participated in was uh, they started making some barrels that were heavy toast char one and through a lot of their trials after four or five years i thought they were tasting better than the char three barrels they were putting out really so i'd say nowadays we're doing half char three with a, a profile toast and then we're doing half uh that are heavy toast char one and your angel share what's uh what's your angel share loss now and here's the other question is is it different from this building compared to the barrel shed that's four miles down the road? It's yeah. definitely different, but we've even, I mean, we've really found that it's been different with two barrels sitting right next to each other in here. Really? We've we have definitely seen some variances that we wouldn't have expected uh, between a couple barrels that have been sitting right next to each other in this room. So, you so know, there's a, this? Well, there's, uh, there's something supernatural at play in this room too. Okay, there's a... That's a weird segue. Yeah, uh, <laughs> expand on that, no. please, Mike. No, just just uh, you know we're 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 pretty science minded yeah. with a lot of this, and uh, we did have one barrel, which I think I still have some of it. Mm. You guys can try. We had one barrel of our bourbon that went into the barrel at one seventeen. Okay, and we had a different rack system at the time, so everything in the back of the rack you like don't even see it for four or five years. Right. We we're disabling that because we were moving everything down. We came across a barrel that felt extremely light, so it was probably a leak or whatever. We were able to recover eight bottles worth out of it. The four-year-old, like exactly four years, just right at that point in time. So went in at 117, came out at 150.1. <gasps> Holy buckets! So yeah. I actually sent that data off to people who are like real scientists, you know, and, and know what they're talking about with all this. And nobody has any plausible reason that that could have happened. I mean, it, you have evaporation, you have leakage, but how does that account for that big of a jump after right. only four years? Yeah. I mean, we're hitting the one lower 140s after like six years. Yeah. But that's just insane. Yeah. That's nuts. It's just weird. Yeah. So are you doing any, um, the double barrel that toasted? So are you, you put it into a new charred oak barrel? You leave it there for four, five, six years, and then you switch it out to another toasted barrel at all? We have Double done some of that, that and bit. we've done a little bit of that um, just to add a little more cask influence. And then the nice thing with that is we can, you know, now we have a, a char one barrel that maybe has six months to a year of extraction and sure. then we can now use that for like rum or malt whiskey and right. still have plenty of goodies left in the woods. It's kind of the fun of, you know, us doing this. I mean, we have a distillery, we got to play with whiskey. So yeah. we, we like to experiment a lot and do some different things, play around with different types of wood and yeah. think a lot of finishes. We got into scotch well before we got into American whiskey. So um, we definitely have that, um, I guess the influence of having whiskey finished in other barrels. You know, we obviously aren't doing it to try and hide anything, but we like to play around with stuff like that. Right. So where do they find you online? Uh, find us at onebrothers.com on the interwebs and all the socials you'd expect to find us. Fantastic. And they're right here at Highway 20 in Galena, right? Right outside of Galena. Yep. Uh, if you're going east. You can find us at greatamericanwhiskeycookers.com. You can also find us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram. And we also have a Patreon page where you can show us some support and some love. We really appreciate it. Until next time, can be good? Be good at it. See ya. Ha, ha, ha.